I've had the new 3DS for a year now. It's time I play more games that utilize a second control stick. Of course, first person shooters. That's perfect. Is... is that it? Well, it turns out the 3DS doesn't have a lot of first person shooters. And yes, the C-Stick or second analog or laptop nub that new 3DS has is used in many other games that aren't first person shooters. But here on the 3DS, well, there's only a handful of true FPS games. Let's start with Dementium for the 3DS. I played this game originally on the DS and I remember seeing this game at a GameStop and I couldn't believe there was a rated M game on the DS. Obviously, I had to play it and it was a great game. In 2015, this remaster was released on the 3DS, and now with the new 3DS, I have the control of the camera with the second C-Stick. Finally, technology from 20 years prior. I know it's not a big deal, but back on the DS, you had to use A, B, X, and Y to look around, or the touchscreen. The game runs so much better now, and the graphics are nice on the 3DS. You're in a ward here, and it's infested with these zombie-like creatures. It's the type of game to play with headphones on, volume up, 3D all the way up, lights off, in front of a mirror and repeat the phase Dementium. Dementium. Too much? The game incorporates puzzles as well, and you have a little notepad to write notes or clues. You got the usual weapons, guns, a chainsaw, and a flashlight, which you can't use at the same time as your gun, which adds to the element of the game as jump scares happen often in the dark. Kind of like when you're in the dark and you see a shape and think, what is that? Oh, it's just a chair. Wait, what was that? Oh, that's just a zombie. Wait, what? A short game at around 4-5 to five hours, it was originally supposed to be a Silent Hill game proposed by Reganade Kid, the company behind Dementium. You can see the inspirations and it slots perfectly in that horror genre. Sometimes it can be kind of confusing to know where you're going, but the game leads you in the right direction by following the trail of blood. There's also boss battles and different zombies like these screaming flying heads that I still remember to, to this day. Annoying worm zombies that come out of the vents here, spitting acid zombies like the Left 4 Dead ones. The remake has quality of life improvements, such as checkpoints now in the form of these picture frames to save the progress, just like in real life. This game is my personal favorite of the first person shooters on the 3DS, but I'm probably biased since I played the game back on the DS. Reganade Kid lost the rights to the game after the sequel, but later retained them and released this remaster. Then in 2016 the, the company was actually dissolved, and one of the co-founders passed away in 2018. Last year though, the company Atui retained the rights to the franchise, and then a port was released on the Nintendo Switch, so maybe we'll eventually see a third entry in the franchise, or more games from the developers. The next game on the list though is Metroid Prime Federation Force. Now Metroid Prime Federation Force is of course a first person shooter on the 3DS. It released in 2016, and apparently it had some controversy. I haven't really played any Metroid games, but when this game came out, fans were upset due to the long hiatus of the Metroid franchise and the game didn't really have a lot of elements from the series. Playing as a non-Metroid fan, the game I think is actually good. It has local and online multiplayer, and you can customize the mech suit to have different mods and weapons. You can even scan an amiibo to unlock paint jobs, like this x-ray look. Now, if this was just a random game, not Metroid, I would say it was a good game as I mentioned before. I like the shooting mechanics, you explore different worlds, like this uh, scorching planet here, and you have to bring the right equipment depending on the missions, as the weapons have strengths and weaknesses against certain enemies. There's also some puzzle elements, and it could have been a really great game if Nintendo had done it right, as it had been received poorly by the fans. There was even a change.org petition to cancel the game. The game was set to release at Metroid's 30 year anniversary, so that probably was even more salt to the wounds to the Metroid fans. There was a game mode that was released as a standalone free title called Blast Ball. You're back in the mech robots, but now you're just basically playing Rocket League. It has multiplayer and it had online as well. You have to shoot the ball to score a goal, and it even looks like Rocket League, aesthetically speaking. The Blast Ball served as a demo to Federations, and the online servers were shut down before the full games ones were, and it was just another weird thing about the game upon its release. And now I, I kind of understand those Metroid fans now. The next game on the list is Moon Chronicles. Moon Chronicles is another 3DS remake from a DS game, and it's actually Renegade Kid again, the creators from the Dementium game from earlier. Just like Federation Force, this game had some drama. When the game released on the 3DS, it was released in parts as missions on the eShop, and wasn't received well. Playing the game, it's obvious it's the same people behind Dementium, the controls are the same, the way you interact and open doors, but here, it's a space horror kind of game. Kinda reminds me of Dead Space, but uh, maybe that's an insult to that series. But it does have some interesting gameplay mechanics. You get a little droid to remote control into small spaces to help you navigate throughout the levels. But I feel like they overuse it and I have to bust the drone out every room. 
The story is interesting, you're on the moon fighting aliens using technology that the game explains all came from the Roswell incident. I think the game engine and the way the game plays suited Dementium better as the faster gameplay in Moon. I don't know, something is off about it. Although you have complete control of the camera and whatnot, the hit detection is slightly off when shooting the enemies. The different alien weapons are cool though and the graphics are nice, except when you use the drone the screen kind of zooms in into the ground and you can see all the lines in the game. But I usually play with the 3D on at all times because I think it enhances the graphics of the games. And yes, my eyes are fine, okay? Once you pass the chapter 1, you can download the next chapters from the main menu. Uh oh. The first episode released for $8.99 and the remaining three were $4.50 each and it was scheduled to release in Europe, but it never did. Heavy Fire the Chosen Few. Heavy Fire the Chosen Few, say that three times fast. Technically this is an on-rail shooter, so those discount as a first person shooter. It's like those arcade shooter games with the plastic gun you point at the screen type of game. Here on the 3DS though, you don't actually use the analog stick to aim. You use the touchscreen and you slide the stylus across the screen to aim. At first I was like, aim with the touchscreen? There's literally two aiming controls right here. You don't even tap where to shoot, you still have to shoot with the L button. And you reload with the circle pad? What madness is this? You know what, the controls actually make sense. You don't just tap where to shoot because the game is on the top screen, not on the touch screen. And if it was on the touch screen, you wouldn't have the better screen with the 3D and whatnot. And sliding across the touch screen as a sort of mouse aiming is a lot faster than using the circle pad. And having to shoot with L and R button lets you shoot while still holding the 3DS. And it's the usual button you shoot in other shooters anyways. Lastly, the circle pad to reload is kind of satisfying. Pulling down real quick kind of feels like a reload effect. And the actual game, it's eh. It's fun the first few times, but just doesn't work as good as on the 3DS as in the arcade. The company made their previous titles on the Wii, and I'm guessing you probably point the Wii remote at the screen. The game does have a campaign, and the levels are quick with boss battles. Your ranking improves throughout the game, and the 3D effect looks nice. Except when there's like a fence in front of the cursor, the 3D goes all bonkers, kind of like when the face tracking untracks your face for a second. It also has multiplayer, and you can take a profile picture in the game. One thing I haven't mentioned is that you don't necessarily need the new 3DS for the better controls, as there would support for the Circle Pad Pro. Finally, an excuse to use my Circle Pad Pro. Let me just uh, choose one that I want to use real quick. If it wasn't for the fact that this is the old 3DS, the double Circle Pad Pro is so much better than the, you know. I digress though. The 3DS didn't have a lot of options for first person shooters. And in fact, the uh, GB, as we saw in a previous video, had more games. A system with a D-pad and two face buttons had more FPS games than this 3D gyroscope touchscreen camera welding system. But uh, probably the main reason being that there just wasn't enough demand for these games on the 3DS. They experimented more on the DS and maybe that and the Wii U first person shooter games made Nintendo and the developers think twice before releasing FPS games on the system. The DS actually had five Call of Duty games. Five. I know this because I played Modern Warfare on the DS instead of Xbox or PlayStation. And I also played Black Ops on the DS because I found the zombie mode fun, okay? Not ashamed to admit I played those bad DS ports. The 3DS was home to first party titles and big third party titles, and mostly excelled on RPGs, platformers, adventure games, etc. And also had great third person shooters like Resident Evil. And I know there was other games with first person views such as Icarus or even Metal Gear Solid. And if there is a game I miss, let me know down below. Of the games I showcased earlier, I still think they're worth a play if you're interested in those games, and Dementium is the one I would recommend. Maybe developers didn't know where they were going with the FPS games on the system, but I know where I'm going in terms of what I want to play next, and unlike Dementium, I don't need a trail of blood to know where I'm going, because that would mean there was a zombie nearby and a... Oh, wait a minute. Uh oh. 